Hello everyone. Welcome, welcome. Here we go. This is uh, my first attempt in a long time of trying to do a cooking demonstration with you all live here on Facebook. You are going to hear a couple of things right now. My husband wrapping up a business call and my dog is about to bark. So uh, welcome to my real world. <laughs> so I have 30 minutes to show you a really quick and easy uh, instant pot meal. And I'm actually gonna make two versions of it. So for many of you, I shared the uh, recipe in advance, which is from my book, Vegan Pressure Cooking. And it's a simple bean and potato hash. This is genuinely the way I cook. And so I'm actually not using a lot of the ingredients that's called for in this uh, cookbook because I am about to show you cooking in the real world, in my real kitchen, with my real dog barking. <laughs> um, and I'm going out of town on Friday. And so I'm only going to cook with what I have right now. So a couple of things you may have noticed. I have steam coming out of both Instant Pots. A trick when you're cooking a meal in an Instant Pot is to heat the Instant Pot up first so that it will come to pressure more quickly when you are trying to do a fast meal. So I've done that and I've got some water going. So I'm gonna start with the original recipe that's in the book right now. So I'm going to uh, put a little bit of, uh, actually this is grapeseed oil and I want a little olive oil. Do a little olive oil in the instant pot it's on the saute function and if you don't use oil you can just go ahead and use however you do a dry saute you might add a little veggie broth you might use a vinegar like a rice vinegar or a balsamic vinegar and so for this particular recipe i'm using some beans that i soak overnight some really big they're almost like a red lima bean they're from rancho gordo and so when i put them in this jar they were at a cup and then I put water in and let them soak overnight and look how they've expanded. So I'm going to drain them in just a minute, but let's get these sweet potatoes and carrot, which is what I went for today. We're gonna get those going and I've got, like I said, a little bit of oil. And then just to get things fragrant, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the seasonings in that I'm using. So I'm using some diced or minced garlic. And then I have some cumin, some smoked paprika, and a little chili pup. So I'm just gonna get the flavor in here. And then a little trick when you're cooking in your Instant Pot, particularly when you're doing a saute function, always have your broth handy and ready to roll because then if it starts to stick, you can just put a little broth in and it'll keep uh, the veggies from sticking. Uh, and I'm gonna add some onion too. And I'm gonna add a lot of onion. So right now I've got carrot, sweet potato, onion, garlic, and some lots of flavor, some seasoning. So, I'll show you what this looks like in just a minute. This is a, a soaked bean, so I had dry beans that I soaked overnight, so I'm going to rinse them. I'm gonna show you, I have this measuring cup that is a three cup measuring cup. It's also a colander. I love it for beans, because I'm actually not gonna use all three cups today, I don't think. I think I'm gonna use, um, yeah, so as it soaked up, I got to about two cups, and you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and use the two cups. So I'm gonna get these cups, or these uh, beans in. And I'm going to give it a nice stir. And then I want you to see what I mean by one of the instructions I have in the recipe. So I'm gonna use some silicone gloves so I can bring the pot over to you. Because this is a really important part. So the broth I'm using actually is a, um, a red pepper chicken style, um, it's called chicken salt. It's not chicken, it's 100% vegan. Um, but I've used red pepper to kind of pull all of the flavors in that um, I'm using smoked paprika, etc. But what I want you to see is in the, in the recipe, what I suggest is that you put in enough liquid to just cover the beans. So that could be two cups, that could be two and a half cups. So I'm gonna start pouring. And what I'm going to do is stir while I'm pouring it in, just to make sure I have enough broth to cover it. So I want you to see what I mean by that. I'm going to stir this up because these beans were dried. They have not been cooked. They need enough liquid to cook, but because this is a hash, we don't want so much that it becomes soup. So I don't have quite enough. So I'm going to keep adding some hot water now until I get just enough liquid to cover the top. 
So at this point, I would say we're at about two and a half. And I am feeling good about that. So I'm going to put this back in the pot. And these are dry beans soaked overnight, sweet potatoes, and carrots. I want to cook this on high pressure because those beans have to cook. So I'm going to cancel the saute function. I'm going to choose pressure cook. And then for the temperature, I'm going to go up to high. And then I'm going to cook for about 10 minutes. Let's go with 10 minutes. And I'm going to hit start. So for those of you, if you're new to pressure cooker, pressure cooking, remember that an, on an Instant Pot or a pressure cooker or any kind of uh, electric device that you have, when it says cook at eight minutes, 10 minutes, 11 minutes, high pressure, it has to come up to pressure. Then once it comes up to pressure, it will cook for those 10 minutes. That's why I was getting the pot hot in advance. I want it to go as quickly as possible. Hey, Marcia, good to see you. Thank you for that affirmation that you're hearing me. Um, and so that's what's gonna go on here. So I'm gonna be waiting for the float valve on the Instant Pot lid to come up, and I'll actually show you on this one what I mean, because the second iteration I'm gonna do cooks up a little bit more quickly. So um, this float valve right on the top, this will go up and down. When it's, when it's not at pressure, it's flat. When it comes to pressure, this pops up. So that's a signal that it's coming to pressure. So sometimes with your Instant Pot, you may notice that it's kind of starting to make some sounds, but it's not quite sealing. If you just push down on the lid, oftentimes that float valve will pop right up to just kind of get the sealing taken care of. So um, that's just a little FYI with that. Before I get started on this other recipe, let me tell you again how and why I'm doing these two versions of this recipe. So the current one that is currently warming up right now were dry beans soaked overnight. And that means it's the difference between if I put dry beans in the pot, they would have had to have cooked for 45 minutes to an hour on high pressure. Now I live at elevation. I'm not gonna overcomplicate things for you guys right now, but if you live at elevation, in my book, Vegan Pressure Cooking, I actually have an elevation chart because beans take longer to cook for us when we're at pressure. Now, having said that, vegetables and fruit times the same, grain times the same, but for some reason, beans need a little bit of adjustment. Um, so regardless, dry beans that you just throw into the Instant Pot are gonna probably take 45 minutes to an hour. A Little bit longer for me at elevation. Dry beans that have been soaked overnight that's the difference between 45 minutes to an hour and what we're doing here, which is like 10 minutes to 12 minutes. So that's what's going on. I also paired those beans with, and let me just grab which beans I did because that's not fair. I gave you guys in the um, recipe a type of bean you can use for Rancho Gordo. I, when I get my Rancho Gordo beans, I transfer them into um, uh Carol, I, I, I think you might have missed early. I saw your message about not seeing... Um, the onion and what I said at the, the top of this is I'm doing real world cooking which is I'm going out of town in a few days and so I'm just cooking with what I, what I have to show you that you can have a recipe but then you can also kind of make it your own so um, so no need for onion but hey if you like onion eat them up um, so these beans are the Christmas lima beans and so that's why the cooking time aren't they just gorgeous and I thought they would be beautiful with the sweet potatoes and the sweet potatoes take a little bit longer to cook so I have a hearty lima bean soaked overnight with a really dense sweet potato, some onions, some garlic, and some spices. They're going to cook for about 10 minutes on high pressure. Now, the second one I'm going to do, so remember, this pot has been on as well. I'm going to pull it out so you can see a little bit of it. So um, some of you may or may not know that you can, with your Instant Pot, you can actually put your lid right here. Did you know that? Isn't that cool? Right here in that little slot. So I'm going to put that over here. But I, um, Carol, just so you know, um, I also had started these pots early uh, with water just to get them hot because this is a 30 minute demo and I wanted them to come up to pressure as quickly as possible. So now I'm going to cancel this. On the other one, I showed you um, a way to, uh, I, I put a little oil in. This one, I'm not going to uh, start with oil. I'm just going to use vegetable broth instead. But then I'm going to use the same basic premise. I'm going to throw some more onion in here. And again, it's because I'm going out of town. 
and I am using up what I have and that included some onion. And then I'm gonna add some garlic. And then I'm gonna use canned beans. So canned beans could also mean cooked beans. So let's say one Sunday, you make a bunch of beans, you, you take some dry beans, put them in this pot, cook up a pound of them, and you have a bunch and you're like, hmm, I wonder what I'm gonna do with them at some point. So maybe some you know you're gonna put them right away in some soup. Maybe half of them you're gonna take and you're gonna puree in your food processor with garlic and tahini and lemon juice and make a bean puree or a bean dip. And then some you might not know what you wanna do with, but you know they're cooked and they're ready to roll. They would work in this recipe, or in this case, I'm using canned black beans. So what am I gonna do differently? In this pot, I have the lima beans that soaked overnight and are now cooking with the sweet potato on high pressure. In this pot, I have just one small russet potato, diced up pretty small pieces, a little bit of tomato. I'm actually gonna put some arugula in and um, some more spices, which I'll tell you about in a minute. Because the beans are canned, they're already cooked, we don't want them to be mushy, we're gonna cook on low pressure for five minutes. Sometimes you can do beans for two or three minutes. I'm gonna go with five minutes because I want this potato to also cook up. So I'm gonna get the potato in here right now with the onion. I'll save the um, tomatoes for the very end. So this is in a little bit of veggie broth versus oil. And so um, the veggie broth is already kind of cooking down a little bit, so I'm gonna put a little bit more in. And again, a little hack when you are cooking in your Instant Pot and you have a saute function, always have a little water or veggie broth right next to the pot so that you can just drizzle it in to keep everything from sticking. So I don't want these onions or the garlic to stick. So the spices I'm using for this black bean russet potato, and I have onions and garlic in there, I'm using herbs de Provence, I'm using oregano, and I'm using a little fennel. So the reason I did these two different flavor profiles was to also show you that you can do something very similar with the same ingredients and you don't have to worry about getting tired of it, getting fatigued by, oh my gosh, am I gonna have beans and potatoes one more time? You can cook them separately or you can do it like I'm doing in two different pots and do using a different flavor profile. It's a great way to do some batch cooking, getting prepared for the week, but kind of avoiding some of that fatigue when you do meal prep. So the other thing that I didn't mention and I'll mention now is you may have noticed I did not put salt in this pot that's cooking right here with the Christmas lima beans and the sweet potatoes because they were dry beans soaked and they're cooking and salt sometimes can have an impact on the way dry beans, even if soaked, will cook. Meaning some beans might not cook all the way through, others might cook too much, they might break. And so um, I don't use salt until after I've cooked, but I'm using a canned bean, which I, it was a low sodium black bean, canned black bean, I rinsed it. And now I'm just gonna add just a pinch or two of iodized um, sea salt. And I'll even put a little uh, pepper in here. And I'll use the salt and pepper on the other one when it's done. So now I'm gonna put my um, black beans in. So here's the difference on the liquid. So the recipe that you had in advance with the dry beans, what I suggested was two to two and a half cups of veggie broth and that you want to have just enough to cover everything. You don't want it to be too soupy, but you need to have enough liquid in there to cook everything. Well, when you're using canned beans or cooked beans that you have left over, they don't have to cook in the same way. So what you want to do is follow the principles of how an Instant Pot works, which is you want about a half a cup of liquid when you're cooking. So that's what I'm going for. I put together just a little over a half a cup of um, veggie broth. But what I'm going to do now, I've already added my seasonings. Now I'm going to add the arugula. And um, arugula cooks up really quickly, so I want to be clear why I'm doing it, because you could say, why would arugula need to cook for five minutes even on low pressure? Arugula has a peppery flavor to it. I'm using the arugula, yeah, bonus, they're leafy greens and they have nutrients in them. I'm using them for flavor. So you saw that I just used a smidge of black pepper because I'm gonna get peppery from this. Okay, so look, 10 minutes. Um, we are now counting down. This has come to pressure. 
and the first batch with dry beans is cooking and it will cook for 10 minutes. What we'll wanna do is what's called a natural release. So I do wanna let you know that as soon as I get this one going, I'm gonna have time to take questions with you. And so feel free to start to use the comment section as we do that. Let me get these tomatoes in. I just put a few tomatoes in because I have them. And then I'm gonna pull this out so you can see again the amount of liquid that I am using. So my this Instant Pot makes noises at me when I take it out. So I'm gonna bring the camera down so you can see. So now I'm still at about a half a cup. And I used a lime flavored chicken style um, veggie broth for this. So I want you to see as much as you can <laughs> um, that the liquid, I have just enough here on the bottom that what we don't want is for the pot to say, it's hot, it's hot, I don't have enough liquid. And, um, but we also don't want it to be soupy, right? So now that I see it in here, I'm gonna go just a little bit more because I wanna make sure those potatoes get nice and done. And that should do it. So now I'm gonna put this in the Instant Pot for five minutes, low pressure, and I'm gonna do this quick release, which I'm gonna to explain to you in just a minute. So we're gonna go pressure cook, low, and then we're gonna go, you can tell, I'm trying to figure out what I cooked for an hour last time. So I'm gonna use the timer down to five. And I am going to hit start. Not every pot requires that, mine does. So um, because I did a saute function, because I had this pot on for quite some time, it should come up to pressure pretty quickly. So um, now that I am here, let me just see if I have any questions from any of you. And it doesn't look like it. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask right now. Where do you get the measure? <laughs> Hello, Re. Um, I got that. I know, isn't it awesome? She asked where um, I got the um, colander measuring cup, the pepper, pampered chef. Um, my niece does parties. <laughs> and so like whenever she does one, I'm like, send me the link. I'll go through. And so I'll just pick things. And I'm like, oh my gosh, why did I buy that? <gasps> you guys, I love this thing. It's also really great when I'm prepping food. And like something for a stew or something, and I know like I need a half a cup of chopped celery, a half a cup of chopped uh, onion or carrot, a cup of onion, and then like maybe, I don't know, some potatoes. Well, it's got the measuring lines in here. So as I'm chopping and dicing, I can have water running over it, and then I get to a half cup and I'm like, okay, I've got enough carrot. Then I get up to the half cup, now I'm at a cup because with my celery and adding it. So it's really good for prep and for like cleaning your veggies while you're slicing and dicing. Um, and, um, oh, thank you for the welcome back, Ree. And hey, Vicki, it's so good to see you. I'm so happy to see you guys. I'm really hoping these 30 minute things are gonna work for you. I'm trying to make this work in my lifestyle with you know managing both my work life and my personal life. And um, you all know I love to talk. <laughs> And so, and I was like, I can't believe the first one I'm doing is Instant Pots because I'm like, they, who knows if they're going to finish cooking in time. So, um, so please uh, bear with me. Um, so Brittany asked, where were the veggie broth starter powders? Great question. Let me show you two of them. I, um, so this company is called Jada Spices. Um, I apologize for my dog barking. Um, when I'm talking and looking at the camera, he doesn't know why I'm not looking at him. Um, and so, um, so this one is the, it's, um, you notice that they say vegan all over it. So even though it's called chicken salt, most of them have a base that has some salt, but it has like turmeric and has different spices in it. So like this one, what else is in here? Um, sea salt, turmeric, onion powder, garlic powder, um, red pepper. So I used this one with the sort of chili style and then I used the lime with the more Italian style. So I like using things like this with veggie broth instead of buying a thing of like four cups of veggie broth. And sometimes I do make my own veggie broth, but listen, um, like I don't do it all the time. And so what I like about this is I can control how much I put in and it does not take a lot to get a lot of flavor. So I know I'm bringing down the sodium while boosting the flavor. So I really enjoy them. And actually I have many, many, they have a barbecue one. Um, I order them from their website. They have one for turmeric. I use this for my um, tofu scramble. Uh, let's see, I thought there was another one. Um, anyway, uh, so yeah, so that, that that's it. Um, okay, let's see, Christine, what were the sweet potatoes in both versions? Um, oh, um, Kristen, sorry, I called you Christine, my bad. Um, 
uh, and I gave Margaret just what she needed to know about the, um, I, I'm assuming just what she needed to know about the spices. Um, and so Kristen, your question was the potatoes. So, oh, my cat is on the counter. I mean, you guys, welcome to my life. This is just, this is what happens around here. Um, so, um, that was Oliver, by the way. Um, so I used sweet potatoes with the dry Christmas lima beans that I soaked overnight and I used the sweet potatoes because they take a little bit longer to cook than like a fingerling potato or a finely diced um, russet and so that was one of the things I wanted to make sure you got to learn from me today in this 30 minute quick sort of cooking demo on using the instant pot is you want to mix and match vegetables and ingredients that make sense for the cooking time so the sweet potatoes are with the dry beans because both need a longer cooking time of about 10 minutes which is happening right now then because i used canned black beans because i wanted to let you know like some people think well i got an instant pot but i just don't really cook with dry beans so i don't really need it you don't have to wait for dry beans to use the instant pot canned beans um, sure, they're done. You could eat it the, the beans right out of the can, but you also make a lot of recipes with them, right? Soup, chili, uh, maybe a saute with a curry um, and artichoke hearts. I did that yesterday with some cannellini beans. And so you can absolutely do that. So what do I want to pair with beans that have already been cooked or canned? I want a vegetable or ingredients that are going to cook at about the same time and not get too mushy. So for that one, I used russet potatoes, but it was a small russet potato and then I diced it in smaller pieces. So this pot is going to cook at five minutes low pressure. I don't know if it's going to get done in time. We'll see because it's not at pressure yet. Um, do you want to come to pressure yet? It wants to. I hear it. It wants to. And then this one, it probably will. So let's talk about, um, okay, Brittany got her question. You keep them coming because I can see you guys now. I can see your questions. So I think, oh, let me hide my pinned one and I might even be able to see more of, perfect. So you can keep the questions coming and I'm gonna keep sharing some tips with you on how I use my Instant Pot for really quick kinds of meals. For instance, did you know that you can make tofu scramble in your Instant Pot? I love doing that. Now let's talk about something that is almost like a, I don't think I can give you a specific like right answer, wrong answer on the sweet spot for this, but something to look out for. So as I mentioned, when you're cooking in your Instant Pot, you do need a minimum, they say a minimum of a half a cup of liquid. Um, this is about to come up to pressure. We're gonna probably hear it beep in just a minute. And that's for safety, well, it's for all kinds of things, like you don't want your food to stick, right? And you don't want it to burn. You'll, sometimes you get the burn signal on there. Um, so you need enough liquid. But there are some things that you're cooking that you don't want it to be soup. Like these are supposed to be like a hash, not a soup. And so you wanna find that sweet spot. So with tofu scramble, I need enough liquid so that everything, you know, nothing sticks to the bottom but not so much that it's not really tofu scramble because tofu scramble we usually do in a skillet, right? And we're kind of looking for that texture that's familiar like with scrambled eggs. So what I do, okay, now this one's on low pressure for five minutes. We have two minutes left on this one. I'm gonna give it about a five minute um, natural release and then um, just because I want you to be able to see the final result. But back to this tofu scramble. So let's say you're gonna do a tofu scramble and your usual tofu scramble is um, starting with a mirepoix, which is you know typically onion, celery, carrot, and then I almost always throw garlic in it. And I almost start any saute with that, right? So even in the Instant Pot, that's what I do. And then I think, what else do I want in this? Mushrooms. So I'll throw some mushrooms in, maybe some edamame, maybe some bell peppers, green peppers, orange, uh, red. Maybe I want some jalapenos. Um, maybe I want some leafy greens. So I get all those things going in the pot, and then I just crumble with my hands extra firm tofu into the pot. Just with my hands, I just crumble it so I get little pieces of tofu. Then I'm gonna have a cup next to me of the veggie broth. And I'm just gonna, and I'm gonna start with a minimum of a quarter cup and I'll put some in. And if I'm like, oh man, that tofu's really soaking up that liquid, I think I need a little bit more. I may go up to about a half of a cup. But with a tofu scramble, again, tofu you could eat right out of the packet, so it doesn't require cooking. Um, and if I've done a good enough saute on those um, veggies, the carrots and the, the celery, then, um, okay, cool. 
So this is done. Now we want to do a natural release. If you're new to pressure cooking an Instant Pot, um, what that means is it's done cooking, but I'm going to leave it alone. In theory, I might wait 15 minutes, but I don't have 15 minutes. I only have five more minutes with you. So in five minutes, no matter what's happening, I'm going to do a quick release so you can see this. And then the same thing, I get to do a quick release with this one anyway, because I cooked it on low pressure. So I'll show you what a quick release looks like. So back to the tofu scramble. I've got enough liquid in there now. I don't need to cook it more than two minutes at low pressure, maybe three minutes if I threw some sweet potatoes or some russets in there. So now I cook it. And since I cooked at low pressure, tofu's already cooked, I'm gonna use a quick release. And a quick release simply means on the newer Instant Pots, you just push the lever and it releases it. Um, you'll wanna put like a towel over the top, which I'm gonna show you that in just a minute. And then it keeps the steam from kind of going everywhere. Uh, and then if there is more liquid in it than I want, I will do one of two things. If there's way more liquid in it than I would want, I actually just, uh, over the sink, I just drizzle a little bit of that broth out, put it back in the Instant Pot, hit the saute function on high, and I just keep stirring constantly until the liquid cooks out. And then I have my tofu scramble. But instead of needing to saute at the skillet the whole time for the tofu scramble, that's the only time I'm doing it. But I'm at the point now where I kind of get the sweet spot right away, and it just takes practice. You'll just know I know that's probably not the answer you want, but that's what's gonna happen with this hash as well, because especially with the one that I used with dry beans that I soaked overnight. There's very possible that there's gonna be more liquid in it than I want. And so I'm actually gonna drain it out, but you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna save it in a mason jar. Why? Because I'm not gonna eat all of this tonight. It, we're gonna have it for dinner, but I have two now. We get to choose, which one do we want? Italian style or do we want chili style? but I'm gonna save the cook broth in here because when I reheat it tomorrow, if I have it for breakfast, because remember this is called breakfast or not bean and potato hash, because this is proof that we can get out of our box on what we think breakfast is supposed to be or lunch is supposed to be or dinner is supposed to be. I just know that on any given day, I want beans and legumes, I want whole grains, I want starchy veggies, I want leafy veggies, I, you know, fruits, nuts, seeds. I know what food groups I want. I don't care what, what time of day I eat them. I want to eat what sounds good to me at the time. So I will definitely be having one of these for breakfast. And you could even pour a little just egg in one of them. If you're reheating it, you could just throw it in the skillet with a little just egg, turn a little eggy. Or you could crumble like a half a block of tofu in and turn it sort of into a bean and potato tofu hash. But then you can take this cook broth and drizzle it in when you're reheating to give it the liquid it needs to avoid sticking. So that's why if I have extra liquid, which I think I'll have a little, I'm just gonna drain it into this jar to use later. Okay, so I see some more questions. Um, or I did, um, oh cool, oh good. So this is helpful information to you guys. So I'm trying to think what else I wanted to tell you that I do really quickly um, in the Instant Pot. Oh, so I am kind of um, notorious for you know, doing some batch cooking on Sundays. Like, I'll just be like, I, I, I just need to be ready for the week. I don't know what I want to eat, but I know the kinds of foods that I want to eat. So I'm going to make a bean. I'm going to make a grain. I'm going to chop up some veggies and get them ready. Well, I can, like, maybe at lunch, like, and I wake up in the morning, I'm like, oh, it's gray. It's a little chilly out. Hot soup for lunch would be amazing. I'll get my Instant Pot out. And I'll take a cup or two of a cooked grain or quinoa, maybe some brown rice, some millet, um, farro, Israeli couscous, regular couscous, uh, quinoa, I think I mentioned that, a grain. And then I'll take a cup or two of beans, depending on if it's just me or if it's Dave and I. I might take some leafy greens out of the refrigerator, like spinach or bok choy, kale. Um, I'll do a cup or two of veggie broth with one of these flavored and then just some seasonings of choice and I will just combine it and I'll just pressure cook it on low for two minutes and then when it stops I leave the pot on warm all morning long and then I just scoop out soup 
at lunchtime and I'm just ready for it. Or if I think that's what I want for dinner, I do that while I'm taking a lunch break. I go ahead and set up a soup with all of those yummy things I did before, and then I can just leave it in the Instant Pot on warm. So, um, oh, Ree, thank you. So you're, get, you're getting the real deal for me, Ree. <laughs> this is how I roll. So with 30 seconds left, let's see what I can show you guys. Do you think I'm gonna make it? Can I really do a cooking demo in 30 minutes? Okay, so remember, this is the low pressure one. And these were canned beans and russet potatoes and arugula with some onion and celery. So I'm going to um, hit this. So this is a quick release. I've got my towel here. This is, you know, it sounds scarier than it is. Um, and it was also on low, so it's not going to take as long. But you can also see not a lot of steam is coming up. But I'm just going to cover it here. And then, oops, watch out, Harry. And then I'm going to, um, I might just drain this over if I have any extra liquid as soon as this float valve comes down which i'm gonna go like this i know it's hard to see from so far away but there's a float valve up here now i'm very comfortable with an instant pot as you probably figured out so i have no problem going like this and then i just keep hitting the float button and, it, and it's down so as soon as the float float when it, the float valve was up i would not be able to open the lid but since it's down i can't oh man you guys does this smell good Okay, and the amount of liquid is awesome. So let me show you safety first. I'm going to grab this, and then I'm gonna show you what this hash looks like. There's a little liquid in there, but not a lot, but I'm just gonna drain it off um, just a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do, just to finish this off, now I have just a teeny tiny, I have barely any liquid in there. And you can just see all of these. I can already tell the potatoes are perfectly done. So now all I'm going to do is cancel this, put it on saute, but on low. And then I'm just going to stir it while, I, and what I'm trying to do is just cook down the rest of the liquid. Because hash, when you think about a traditional hash, that's in a skillet, right? And it's going to almost, there's a dryness to it. Now what I'm going to do is the cooked, the lima beans, that was a longer cooking time. And we cooked on high pressure. High pressure, usually a recipe for instant pot or pressure cooking will say, um, cook at high pressure for 10 minutes, use a natural release. Well, what a natural release means is you don't open this until the float valve comes down. And the reason is because it's still cooking. And so it's kind of built in the cooking time. And um, so that's one thing. Another time, at other times you'll see a recipe that will say 15 minutes, high pressure, natural release and then behind natural release it will say 15 minutes what that means is if the pressure hasn't come down in 15 minutes it's fine do a quick release it's done cooking well that is not what's happening in either case here but i'm releasing pressure anyway because now i'm officially 30 minutes over oh no i'm not i'm two minutes over well you're saints thank you for hanging out i told you that it was going to be nearly impossible for me to do this so let me just saute the beans and, oh it's so pretty i'll play it for you so you can see how pretty they look and how different they're going to look so let's just see um oh kristen the the soup i'm telling you it has been a game changer for me um, it's just a great way to feel like I'm eating wholesome food during the day when I'm really busy. I'm usually on Zoom coaching calls all day long. And to just know that I can take some things that I prepared in advance, pull them all together, and then the art, it's in the flavoring, right? And um, we won't even talk about this. Oh, maybe our next 30-minute one could be on umami. I know some of you have been hearing me talk about umami for like literally 12 years, but that's what just came to mind. Um, is that umami is kind of the sweet spot. So when you're making that soup, you can say, maybe I'll drizzle a little balsamic vinegar over it, or I'll use some dried mushroom powder, or I'll use soy sauce, or I'll use nutritional yeast. Those things are the flavor bombs that can take a plain brown rice, a plain cooked bean, some spinach or some kale with some flavorful veggie broth, and you start piling in the things that you like that bring out umami and bring out that flavor. Um, and then, oh, re asked, um, oh, I'm sorry. I think I already answered that. My, I'm so sorry. Oh, there's Reese. I got a thumbs up. I knew I saw your name, Re. Um, okay, cool. So I'm glad that that was helpful on, on quick and natural release. Again, my apologies. I'm now almost five minutes over, but really in JL time, it's a little bit of a miracle. And so if all goes well, if I release you in 45 seconds, five minutes is winning. 
Um, okay, so I already have a little bit of that broth that was from the other one. Ooh, and I don't want it to stick. So let me get back to this. Oh yeah, it's perfectly done. So I'm gonna turn this one off. Now I can take this lid off. And this one has a lot more broth in it, which I expected, and I wanted to make sure my beans got done. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I've got my Christmas lima bean, and I'm just gonna check it for doneness. And it is great. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, um, yes, you just saw me, saw me throw that bean back in there, because hello, I'm eating it. Um, okay, so I'm gonna get um, some of the broth. So you're gonna see how much broth is in here. Now, remember, I was gonna stop, but then I was like, well, if I don't have enough, you guys are gonna be so sad. So I used way more than I wanted. So A, this could be soup if I wanted it to be soup right now, but I don't, I want it to be hash. So I'm going to drain this broth and I'm gonna be able to use this when I'm reheating this week. And then I am going to do a really quick saute and then I'll plate the other one. Uh, perfecto. So now you can see, I'll bring the camera down for you. You can see just these beautiful vegetables. I love to cut my onions in half moon slices because um, they're just really pretty. And um, I kind of like that slurpy thing. So now I'm gonna turn this off and I'm gonna put saute on. And I'm just gonna cook down that broth a little bit to turn it super, you know, kind of like a hash. Now, here's my last hack before I plate this for you. And so now I'm officially six minutes over. So my last hack is this. If you have an air fryer, and you guys know that I love my air fryer too, I wrote a book on air frying as well. You can take this leftover hash, you can put it in a casserole dish. So tomorrow I can take this little casserole dish, put the leftover hash in it, combine um, some kind of grated, really finely chopped walnuts and nutritional yeast and sprinkle it on top and put it in my air fryer on 400 for about five minutes and it will have the texture of coming out of a cast iron skillet, that kind of hash. So that's another hack that you can do as well. But let's do the really good stuff and let me plate this for you so you can see that I'm gonna show you two. This is the hash that is cooked with um, cooked I'm sorry, canned black beans, russet potato, and a little arugula. And again, the arugula cooks down big time. And there you go, a beautiful one pot meal that was truly done in under 30 minutes. Me talking doesn't um, negate the truth that we know to be true. So now I'm gonna take these lima beans and these sweet potatoes and show you what this looks like. And these, I'm gonna probably do that air fryer trick tomorrow for breakfast, because I love the texture of these sweet potatoes. So sorry, I forgot the camera was still here. And so here's version one with the dry beans. Here's version two with the canned beans. And you can store them in the refrigerator for up to five days. Beans do really well three to five days in the refrigerator. If you don't think you'll finish them by five days, put them in a jar or a whatever your preferred uh, freezer, airtight freezer uh, container is, and they'll freeze great. And then you can just put them in the refrigerator, let them thaw overnight, and you could do that for advanced planning for some breakfast. So with that, I am eight minutes over, still not bad in JL time. Thank you for joining me. I think I answered all of your questions. And if people are watching later and have questions, I'll be happy to jump in. So I wanted to thank you for popping in. Shall we keep trying these 30 minute, 30-ish 30 minute cooking demos? Are you up for them? Um, if you're up for them, I'll keep doing them. And uh, stay tuned and let me know. You can DM me if there's a topic that you want me to to handle. So thanks for stopping in. It was really fun to cook with you. Let me know if you have questions and have a great night.